Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fiji's first census in 10 years begins. Eradicating transfer pricing a challenge. And aging sugar farmers a major concern. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. Counting for Census 2017 officially began today with more than 2,000 enumerators working their sections across the country. Minor issues were experienced such as technical glitches, but this was expected and countermeasures were put in place to deal with them. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The first citizen, the President Major General Retired Chiochi Conrote, actioning the Census slogan on being counted. <laughs> For a number of Fijians today, this was the normal scene. Enumerators out to collect vital data for future planning. Day one of the count and naturally there were a few bumps on the road. Dogs with the dogs and uh, enumerators have had trouble with that. And also the availability of uh, respondents at home. My enumerators have been facing a lot of challenges uh, in regards to the, to the assignments. So they have to call the supervisors, so the supervisors they are calling me. While callbacks were a common occurrence, coordinators from the Bureau were quick to remedy the situation. It's organized to have uh, cards either slipped down and um, slipped under their doors or in their mailboxes to let them know that we've come around and if they could give us a call and let us know what time. Or we've also, in some cases, we've put down a time that we would come back. And while there are reportedly up to 198 questions that delve into your personal life, the Bureau is adamant the information is confidential. The tablet, the data is safely secured because once it is entered into the tablet, it's encrypted, all the responses is um, is converted into numbers and then it can only be accessed by the headquarters. Day one of the count for census 2017 and understandably there were a few hiccups and of course given that this is one of the biggest logistical exercises this year. The census night September 17th confused a few people. The count though officially beginning from today until October the 8th. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Due to its complexity, eradicating transfer pricing remains a challenge for the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service. In an exclusive interview with FBC News, Revenue and Customs Chief Executive Viswanath Thus said transfer pricing is a huge issue because it involves the jurisdictions of various countries. Rachel Nath with the explanation. Acting Prime Minister A.R. Said Kiyum clearly explained how transfer pricing works and is used as a tax dodge. And you have some supermarkets that set up buying houses in, for example, New Zealand. Uh, they buy their lamp chops uh, from a uh, company, a supplier in New Zealand, and uh, the New Zealand company actually buys it from the New Zealand supplier. Then that New Zealand company, which is owned by the Fijian company, sells it to its own self, but at a much inflated price. That's how they move money out of the country. Transfer pricing is a concern at home because in the end, Fijian consumers pay the inflated price. But fighting the problem requires international cooperation. Different countries are involved. So, you know, sort of resolving these matters is not easy as well. So that's where, you know, the tax treaties come into place, the automatic uh, exchange of information between countries. You know, the, the global trend is, you know, international uh, tech arena, you know, these things are becoming more common because you know, all, all these countries are facing this, facing this issue. Das explained how Revenue and Customs decides to investigate a company for transfer pricing by looking for linked offshore suppliers. Probably the very basic starting point for transfer pricing audits or investigation is uh, looking at companies uh, who have related entities offshore. Das says Revenue and Customs currently has a team of six officers minding the transfer pricing unit. However, with the growing concern, the team is expected to expand. Rachel Nath, FBC News. It's day three of the trial of a woman who last year allegedly tried to kill her child and threatened to kill her mother-in-law. Taking the stand today as the second prosecution witness was the husband of the accused who testified against his wife. Shireen Shivan reports. 
Shaista Devi faces attempted murder and criminal intimidation charges. Her husband Manish Prasad recalled February 6th last year. That day an argument broke out between his wife and mother. Prasad says he prepared breakfast that morning and left for work, only to be called by his mother at around midday, asking him to inform Devi's family about the argument taking place in their house. The witness testified that his mother constantly kept on telling him to tell Devi's family to take her away. Prasad says his wife also called him and swore at him for calling her family and threatened to kill their two children and herself. He says his mother called him again at around 3 p.m., telling him to rush home and bring police with him. When questioned what happened, Prasad testified that he was told by his mother that Devi tore bed sheets into strips and tied them to the terrace of the house, threatening to hang their four-year-old child. He says his mother also told him that when she tried to stop Devi, she told her to go away and threatened to kill her as well. The witness said he quickly rushed from work and upon reaching home, he saw the bed sheet hanging on the terrace as his mother had described. The matter was then reported to police. The prosecution's next witness is the accused person's four-year-old child who will give evidence to court tomorrow. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. The extreme dry spell in the Western Division has had a negative impact on the cane yields. The Fiji Sugar Corporation says this will have an impact on the cane estimation for this year. Robate Valame reports. Fiji Sugar Corporation Chief Executive Graham Clark says the result will be 13% lower than the pre-harvest estimate for this year. Um, the period April to August has seen rainfall reduced to nearly less than half of the long-term mean. Uh, so a very dry period despite sort of like initial expectations of near normal rainfall uh, as predicted by the Met Office. So the dry weather is expected to continue at least up until November, December uh, and, uh, and cane yields will, um, will be negatively impacted. Clark says they have done a re-estimation of the remaining crop. The total cane estimate for the year coming down probably just to around 1.8 million tons now, which is about 13% below the pre-harvest estimate. FSC Chair states the importance of sustainable and consistent farming. If you build your business in a sustainable, in a consistent manner, and you still get hit by a cyclone or a tsunami, you will have the resilience to face such setbacks and then be able to run with the ball. But if you're already in a hole, and then you get hit by a tsunami or a cyclone, you go further down in the hole. You know? Despite the dry weather, Clark says the purity of the cane is well above last year. And because of lower crop, he adds the crushing season will end earlier. Ropate Valeme, FPC News. Meanwhile, the Fiji Sugar Corporation is putting strategies in place to address the aging farmers' issue faced by the industry. Apart from the new incentives announced by the government, the FSC is also investing in modern technology to attract young people into cane farming. Rapate Valame again with this report. The FSC will venture into cane planting soon. However, Chief Executive Graham Clark says this will not be a permanent solution. And ultimately, I would say, FSC is not in the long-term game of owning cane farms. <clears throat> it would be great to actually have those farms taken over by young people in the future. Clark says an estimated 60% of the cane farmers are of the aging population. He says the government has allocated $5 million to encourage new sugarcane farming and $1 million for mechanization. What we're trying to achieve going forward now is total alignment between the support that's being made available from government, which I might add, is probably amongst the most significant I've seen relatively across the world of sugar. And if we deploy it in an aligned way with what we're all trying to achieve, I really think there's quite an exciting future uh, for, for the industry so we get back to where we should have been. Meanwhile, FSC Chair Vishnu Mohan says there was a time when there only 50% of the mills were operating. I mean, that's not good. I mean, we can't call ourselves uh, a sugar producer and yet have only 50 percent of the mills working I mean that's so we need to so to me it's, it's all it's all basic it's all fundamental it's all simple common sense either you do it properly or don't do it the FSC aims to increase sugar production by 400,000 tons in the next five years Mohan says they need to get fundamentals right in order to achieve this target Ropate Valeme FBC News
Still to come, water bow ends for two farming communities. And Mental Health Act provides good guidance, says Minister. Stay with us. Bula FM number dua and seri. A 15-year-old girl was allegedly gang raped by a group of students at a school in Nandronga. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro says a report was lodged by the victim's teacher last Friday. Naisoro says the alleged incident occurred on three different occasions in June at the school compound and the suspects are believed to be students of the same school. Investigations are continuing. Close to 300 people will now have access to clean and safe drinking water following the opening of two new water projects today. The pipe water supply now ends decades of water problems for two farming communities located side by side. Eleanor Turangaivu reports. For decades, residents in the farming communities in Dongeloa have been using water from wells and the nearby river. The opening of this water project today and their struggle to get clean and safe drinking water. If it is very dry, the wells also go dry during a dry spell. So people used to get also water from the creeks and they had continuous problems. They have given us two big water tanks, 10,000 litres each. So it's a great help because if we told the people of our community to buy these things and then continue with the project, it would have been uh, almost impossible for the people. A total of $86,737 was given by the Japanese government for the two projects, which was facilitated by the Pacific Rotary Water for Life Foundation. The labor for the installation of the tanks and the piping system was provided by the community. The water tanks were installed in both communities that will provide enough water pressure to reach all members as well as increase the water storage capacity to permanently fix the water supply problems. The projects, one at Dongeloa Central Settlement and Dongeloa 3 Settlement, sees the installation of water tanks and the piping system from the tanks to the homes. We did a topographic survey to design the water system and it was around six kilometer distance. So the water from the dam comes down to the storage tanks and then supplied to the household. The ownership of the project, uh, the project is yours. It's not for the government, it's not for the government of Japan and not, not for the government of Fiji, it's for the community. The onus is now on the people of the two settlements for the care and maintenance of the two tanks and its piping system. Eleanor Turangibu, FBC News. Health Minister Rosie Akbar says the Mental Health Act has provided an opportunity to create more awareness and remove the stigma associated with mental disorders. She was addressing participants at the 7th Creating Future Conference at Novotel in Lamy. Savaratambua has more. Sharing knowledge and developing skills amongst the participants is aimed at ensuring more effective care for those in our communities who experience mental illness. According to Akbar, Fiji is fortunate to have in place a sound legislative basis for our mental health services. It also confirms Fiji's adherence to international agreements and standards concerning the care and treatment of people with mental illness as well as signaling a commitment subject to available resources to provide access to basic mental health care for all who need it and to do so in the, <clears throat> in the, best, uh, in the, sorry, in the least res restrictive way. St. Giles Acting Medical Superintendent Dr. Kiran Gaikwad says that the Act provides a framework for the prevention, treatment and care of mental disorders. Been implemented to treat the patients with dignity and respect. The nation's main mental health facility, St. Giles Hospital, offers inpatient and outpatient care as well as being the center for training of medical students at both the graduate and undergraduate levels. Sabira Tambua, FBC News.
The Fiji National Council for Disabled Persons has received complaints from around the country of discrimination against people with disabilities. Executive Director Dr. Sitiveni Yanuyanutawa says many of the issues raised are of growing concern. Kelly Vathala reports. People with disabilities continue to face discrimination and stigma from the public. For some students, uh, like for even for our vocational uh, center students, uh, bus drivers don't want to take their the uh, travel concession uh, cards usually have calls from uh, uh, people who are working, people who are physically or mentally challenged. And some uh, have uh, difficulty been uh, getting into a taxi because the taxi driver doesn't want to take them. Many Fijians say everyone should be treated equally and people with various disabilities are no different. I think that we should be treated equally since uh, we are also part of uh, the development of uh, Fiji's economy. I think it's important that people with disabilities are treated with the same respect as others. Dr. Yanuyanu Tawa says there's a need to understand the challenges people with disabilities face on a daily basis. We've uh, tried over the years uh, to try and uh, change the mindset of uh, every individual uh, citizen of the country. Over 615 million people are living with disabilities around the world and it's against the law to discriminate against disabled persons. It's important that they're treated equally just like any other normal citizen as they contribute to the development of our nation. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Ahead in sports, the Jamie, he will tell us about the upcoming top of the table NRC clash. But up next is Rachel with business. Thank you, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. PG Airways and Salmon Airlines sign code share agreement. And in growing Fiji, Queen Elizabeth Drive opens to traffic. Stay with us. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM. Only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM. Only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back. Leading business tonight, Fiji Airways and Salmon Airlines have signed a code share agreement for flights between Nandi and Honiara. The code share, which comes into effect on the 30th of this month, will see both airlines place their respective FJ and IE codes on each other's flights between Nandi and Honiara. Guests of Solomon Airlines can expect convenient travel and transfer onto Fiji Airways network through its Nandi hub to North America, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia and New Zealand. Managing Director Andre Vigilon says the agreement will f further strengthen the airline's comprehensive South Pacific network. The Chief Executive of Solomon Airlines says the code share is extremely timely and presents a major boost for the region's top uh, rather regions tourism and business aspirations. Fiji Airways operates between Nandi and Honiara on Saturdays while Sonman Airlines operates between Honiara and Nandi on Mondays and Tuesdays. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Good evening. Let's look at the South Pacific Stock Exchange market wrap from last week. Four securities were traded, totaling to 25,729 shares in five transactions. The accumulated value of the five transactions was $152,445. The four securities traded were Amalgamated Telcom Holdings, Freebird Institute, Vision Investments, and Fijian Holdings. In terms of share prices, there were no price losses. However, FHL shares witnessed a gain of 6.38%, or 30 cents, to conclude the week at a new maximum share price of $5. Due to FHL's share price gain, the market capitalization has increased from previous week by 0.19%, or $3.14 million, to stand at $1.656 billion. That is our South Pacific Stock Exchange market news right now. Back to you, Rachel. 
Thanks, Avanada. On today's exchange rates and foreign currencies, as you can see, there was a general increase across the index today as the Fijian dollar rose against Chinese yuan, American dollar, Australian dollar, and PNG Kina, while our dollar fell against the New Zealand dollar to close at 66 cents. As for the commodities market, a mixed day as we start the week with oil prices uh, were slightly up to close at 49.80 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,320 per ounce, and silver closed at 17.60. An ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Queen Elizabeth Drive is now open to traffic. Fiji Roads Authority Acting Chief Executive Robert Sen says while the road has opened to traffic, it will remain an active site as works are currently ongoing. Sen says the workers are still building other roadside amenities such as the bus bay and installing street lights. He says they will reduce the road to a single lane when required to do the necessary works and the traffic controllers will then be directing traffic flow in the area. Workers have completed the rehabilitation of the road pavement, new surface curb and channels and footpath. The landscaping was completed by the Suva City Council. And that's business this evening and sports is up next and here's Jamie. Thanks Rachel and good evening in sports tonight. Fiji and Roa says defense will be vital in next match. I am Pramila my eyes FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बाहर टाउन के केरियर ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची एफएम हमें स्पिन टॉक का बुआ के मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफ After winning its first home match, the Fiji Airways Ndrua is now devising a plan to take down defending champion Perth Spirit in the Australian National Rugby Championship this weekend. The Fiji Ndrua know a tough game awaits them at ANZ Stadium Suva and there will be no room for errors. Eroni Tuinuku reports. Despite last week's victory over the New South Wales Country Eagles, the Fiji Ndrua side believes there is still more room for improvement. So it's got a bit tough uh, game. You know, it doesn't this doesn't matter if we're playing at home. We just have to be uh, playing smart rugby and uh, maintain our discipline for the full 80 minutes. Playing against the defending champions and current point leaders will require an effort that has not been seen so far this season. Uh, mostly, uh, it's our uh, we will be concentrating on our defence because uh, that's the only key factor that's going to make us win for this Saturday. After completing three rounds of games, which has seen the Fijian team win two and lose one game, the local players are beginning to show their caliber. So they realize now that uh, uh, the impossible is nothing. They can be playing against uh, super rugby players or wallabies and, the, and then they still can perform. Uh, and they really believe in themselves. And that's what the uh, result shows. But we have to come down to earth again this week and do everything right and uh, we hope that everything is going to go right to the team for the start of the game. Thunderwa side will start preparing tomorrow before they take on the NRC champions from Western Australia on Saturday at 5 p.m. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. The BG National Sevens extended squad will participate in a tournament in Germany at the end of the month. Coach Gareth Baber will use the outing to test a few new players in the squad before selecting his team for the first leg of the World Series. Eroni Tuinuku reports. National Sevens players will need to have a lot of game time in order to get a good start this season. Um, I'm looking at the end of September into October. Uh, there's a tournament at the end of this year, this month in Germany, which uh, we'll send a team to. It'll be a mixed team. It'll be a team that I want to see players play and want to see how they cope uh, with international competition. It's a good competition in Munich. So, um, yeah, we'll, after that, once we've seen a few of those players play, we'll look to cut. The 30-member extended squad will compete with senior players trying to keep their spots in the team. There's lots of talents in Fiji. We have uh, we've got uh, the squad, uh, the team member squad that are coming in. So it's uh, 
bigger challenge for me because uh, uh, everybody is uh, 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 trying to have a just this season. Newcomer Mbanube Tambako Dorro will strive to be one of the best despite switching codes. Always a target for me and I'm sure everybody is uh, going to see what I can deliver for the VG team. You know, it is a world champion team, uh, Olympic uh, seventh champion as well, so they deserve uh, Olympic seventh standards. So that's what I'm going to give you. Sevens coach Beber will make use of minor tournaments trying to blend in the right combination before the season begins in December. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Local base rugby league players are preparing for one final chance to impress national selectors ahead of the World Cup. Local rugby league reps and overseas based NRL players have a busy month ahead of them as they prepare for the Battle of the Mbati, a final test before the World Cup squad is selected. The Battle of the Mbati will be held on October 7th, while the Rugby League World Cup will run from October 26th to December 2nd. Nemanja Nandolo's Montpellier maintained its unbeaten run in the French top 14 season this morning, while Leone Nakarawa's Racing 92 has moved to second on the table. Early league leader Montpellier won their fourth game running as they saw off Toulon 43-20, leaving them with a five-point cushion. Meli Tavanga reports. Man, they call the, uh, the rhino. Fijian wing Nemanja Nandolo scored an impressive try to help his team overcome Josua Tisova's Toulon this morning. Another South African and Nadolo's going to score. No, oh, he scrounged it. Toulon was leading after seven minutes when the bus Tisova went over the try line, but wasn't enough to match their opponent. Attacking the line, this is good play. Oh, the ball just touched him by Hugo Bonaval into the hands of Tuasova. Who's going to stop him? No one. Leon and Nakarao and Viremi Vakatawa scored a try each for racing 92, putting them second in the standings. Reigning top 14 champions Clement bounced back from their thrashing last weekend with a hat trick from Alivere Raka to help them thrashing bribe 62 points to 2. <laughs> Meanwhile, Watisoni Voto scored a try for Pau to triumph 28 13 over Castres. A try from La Rochelle's Fijian back Kini Murimurivalu brought them victory over Jean 2015. <laughs> Montpellier lead with 19 points, followed by racing 92 on 14 points. Leon rounds up top three with 13. Melitavanga, FPC Sports. Following the zonal competition yesterday, eight teams have been confirmed for the final playoffs of the 2017 Vodafone National Club Championship. In the southern zone, there was Raymond FC, Suva Civic FC and Buret FC were the winners of their respective pools, while Talebu Naita Series Navuso Barbarians came in as the best runner-up. In the western zone, Blues FC of Nandi, Nailang FC of Mba and Green Stars FC of Nandronga qualified by winning their respective pools, while Service Sports Club of Lautoka qualified as the best runner-up. The final playoffs will be held this weekend with pool matches played at Ratu Dakumbau Park in Ausori on Friday and Saturday. The semi-finals and final will be played at the Fiji FA Academy grounds in Watuanga on Sunday. Team Fiji tennis rep Ruby Coffin won her first match at the 2017 Asian Indoor Martial Arts Games in Asgabat, Turkmenistan this morning, beating Oman's Mariam Balushi two sets to one. Coffin managed to win 7-6 in both sets, despite being taken to the wire by Belushi, who did not go down without a fight. Coach Robert Krause was happy and proud of the performance Coffin put in, and is positive the win will be a motivating factor for the other tennis reps. Meanwhile, Conway Begg will feature for, the F for Fiji in the men's singles, which start tomorrow. Athletics Fiji Chief Development Officer Joe Roden Jr. says athletes need to step up their preparations as they head towards the 2017 Pacific Mini Games in Vanuatu. Roden says they are now in the process of confirming the final squad, which will be submitted to Fasnock by the end of this month. Athletics Fiji is looking to take 25 athletes and five officials to the Pacific Mini Games, which will be held from the 4th to the 15th of December. Encouraging. We had some really good encouraging performances that uh, has, have put the athletes in a good position to build the form 
um, for the mini games. Yeah? Given that the fact that we still have another 10 weeks to go, basically 30. Yeah? We're looking at a team of 30. It means that we've seen some, uh, some good progress from uh, the athletes that have turned up for the third trials. In today's play of the day, drama in an incident-packed Singapore Grand Prix with Lewis Hamilton taking a huge stride towards a fourth Formula One title after Ferrari title rival Sebastian Vettel crashed out at the start. That's it from sports. Join Angie later on with weather and in new media tonight. If you're wondering how secure the new Face ID feature is on the Apple iPhone 10, take a look at Apple's answers right after the break. Bula, kero mai singatoka, kero ndo tali taka na varorong na radio fiji one ndo moi viti. Ayo na rinse. In your media, iPhone X has a hidden security trick. Apple's senior vice president of software tells a developer how the iPhone X could prevent others from using Face ID. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Rain spared our weekend, which is the best thing ever. However, all the weekend rain was collected and boom. Rainy Monday for some, while others enjoyed the classic sunshine. And getting a bit into, into detail for today, let's take a sneak peek in the west. It was partly cloudy with some beautiful sunny spells. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, don't you think the weather is a bit teasy? I mean, one moment there's absolute sunshine and the next there's rain. And more is, in, more is in store for tonight as well. And up in Vanualevu, some early morning showers kickstarted the day with sun following. At sea, a strong wind warning remains in force for all Fiji waters. And for the tides, high tide tomorrow morning will be at 5.25 with a low tide at 11.45. See the beauty of sunrise at 5.59. For tomorrow, a clear day with very light rain. I'm pretty sure we all can deal with light rain. Tomorrow's temps, the north takes it away this time. It will be quite warm with highs of 31 degrees. And looking further on to Wednesday, be prepared to sit back and enjoy a sunned field day. And that's our FBC weather for tonight. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, do you agree with the name and shame policy for tax evaders? I think it's uh, better to name it. They name the company, but they never name the person. I think they should be named so that other businesses who are practicing the same thing should learn from it. They should be named because that is corruption. The, the shame and name concept is brought in because people are still evading taxes. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, scientists say bionic eyes are not too far away, but until they become widely available, many people around the world will have to continue living with prosthetic eyes. Recapping the main stories, Fiji's first census in 10 years begins, eradicating transfer pricing a challenge, and aging sugar farmers a major concern. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, the results from last week, we had asked, is Sitiveni Rombuka a better party leader than Rote Momukepa? 59% said no. This week we are asking, do you agree with the name and shame policy for tax evaders? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, the sun slowly rising from the sea in vivid shades of yellow and orange. The shot was captured from the Navini Island Resort in the Malolo Group by Chosua Nandumu. 
Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. And the team and I have a safe, enjoyable evening. Good night. Kero mai singa toka, kero ndo tali taka na varo ronga na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti. Aya wa na radio Fiji, uti kumina shamba uti kola ndo tali taka na radio Fiji One na ndo moi viti. Aya kwa zo sile tali, na kura rama ina omani, na ronga, vitu tali taka ni ndo kumina shamba le vuna kuto ronga, varo ronga na radio Fiji One na ndo moi viti. Na radio Fiji One na ndo moi viti na bonga ni biyenani.